2 Kings 4.1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, and then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. The Spirit of God is referred to as many things. Today we've been singing about fire and wind. So today I want to preach to you about the oil wanted empty vessels. God bless you. You may be seated. And I want to let you know today that I'm going to preach for a while. And then our evangelism pastor, Brother D.J. Hill, is going to come finish this message today. Wanted empty vessels. Once there was a woman with nothing. Her husband was a prophet in Israel, a preacher, a man of God. And you would think that if you served in ministry all of your life, that nothing bad would ever happen to you. But it did, and he died. And he left behind this woman, now a widow, and two sons. We don't know how old they were when this story is being related to us. There was no welfare program back then, and so she lived on whatever he left her. But then eventually crushing debt accumulated and this widow and her two sons were just bankrupt. They were on the verge of starvation. She was at a very desperate place in her life. Everything was drained down to nothing. In this destitute condition, the widow woman took her impossibility to the man of God, the prophet Elisha. It's good to have a man of God in your life. And to have the God of the man in your life. Amen? You need to have someone to go to when you're down to nothing. So she came and told the prophet Elisha, You know, my husband, he was your servant. Served you and served the Lord of Israel. But now he's dead. Left us behind with nothing. And she said, the creditor is coming. The guy we owe all the money to. Back in those days, if you didn't have anything... They wouldn't just come repossess your house. They would take your kids. They might take you yourself to be a, a bond servant, a slave to them. And she said, the creditor is coming. He's going to take away my sons to be his servants. We're literally down to nothing. And Elisha asked a question of her that Jesus asked before. What do you want me to do for you? What shall I do for you? And tell me, what do you have in your house? She didn't have to think long because there wasn't really anything left in your house. And she said, your handmaid doesn't have anything but a little jar of oil. That's all we've got. She wasn't like other people that had a little bit of meal. All she had was oil. From what we read in this story, there was absolutely nothing in the cupboards, nothing in the kitchen. They did not have anything at all. God gave Elisha a plan he told the widow, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all of your neighbors, but I want you to do something kind of unique. I want you to borrow empty vessels. 
Don't go around the neighborhood asking for vessels of oil. I don't want you to borrow any meal. I want you to go and borrow empty vessels. And he said, I don't want you to gather just a few. In other words, God is getting ready to do something for you that is big and not small. I don't want you to have small faith and go out and borrow a few vessels. I want you to go everywhere you can and borrow as many vessels as possible. I like the King James there. He said, borrow not a few. He gave her some further instructions, and so she sent her boys out into the neighborhood. Now, you've got to realize this is stepping out on a limb, but she is down to nothing. No husband, no money, no food. Soon she's going to have no sons. And now, the prophet Elijah said, Elisha says, I want you to add to your emptiness. But I've learned this. When people have it all figured out, they don't do anything. But when you are really down to nothing, when you are desperate, when the doctor's report comes back and it says terminal, when the boss says you're laid off and there's no hope of a job, when your spouse walks out on you, when you realize that there is no hope, and when you are really in a desperate situation, it does not matter what God asks of you, you're willing to do whatever the Lord says if you're really desperate. She was desperate, down to nothing. But I've watched this in my life and I have learned that when you are down to nothing, you can guarantee that God is up to something in your life. If you're in a place where you have reached the end of your resources, then you are ready to tap in to the riches of God that he has in Christ Jesus, and they are limitless. So, she takes these two boys. You know, she probably had a little talk with them. Look, boys, let me tell you how this goes. We don't have a lot of hope. We don't have any money. And the prophet Elisha said that you boys are supposed to go in the village, knock on as many doors as possible, and bring back home all the vessels you can, and they are to be empty. Well, Mom, I'm kind of shy. Well, you know what? You can be a shy, you can be shy, or you can be a slave. Take your pick. Well, I think I'm going to go door knocking. So they went out in the village, and they knocked on a door. And I don't know if the first person was nice or mean, if they were cordial or cruel to those two boys. But I can just imagine, you know, I thought of a name, my favorite Jewish deli in Indianapolis. And Mrs. Shapiro came to the door. And the boy says, you know, uh, pardon me, Miss Shapiro, but mom sent Reuben and me here and told us that we're to ask you if you've got a, a jar or a vase or a pitcher, or, or anything like that. Well, she said, well, what do you mean? Well, we want, we, could we borrow some empty vessels? She kind of like thinking this doesn't make any sense at all, but she goes back in the house and maybe rummages around while these two boys are standing outside her house, and, and she comes back in, and maybe she gives them a, a pot or a vessel. I don't know. Maybe she gave them a couple, and, and so they went, and gathered those up in their arms and knocked on the next door, and maybe that's the one that slammed the door in their face, you know. If you've ever done door knocking or bus ministry or door-to-door -door evangelism, not everybody welcomes you in, right? And they kept knocking, and they had all the vessels they could hold, and they went back home thinking, you know how, I, mean, just, I can imagine like preteen boys or teenage boys, junior high kids. They go back home and they, here it is, Mom. This is what we've got. Is this enough? And Mom looks around and there's a few empty vessels there. And like, no, boys, that's not enough. The prophet said, borrow not a few. Get back out there. Knock on a few more doors. So they went out, knocked on a few more doors, gathered some more vessels, and I imagine that when they got back home, probably a little one-room house, that they filled that house with all of these empty vessels of every shape and size. Some were probably tall and skinny. Probably some were not so tall and skinny. Probably some were kind of short, you know. But I'm glad that no vessel was exempt, right? That as long as it was empty, you could bring it in the house, and it qualified for the potential of a miracle. The house is filled, this hodgepodge of pots and vessels and 
every size and shape and color, and it's all, they shut the door. And the widow woman with her two boys looking on. Isn't it great to watch, have our kids watch our faith in action? Are your kids ever going to get to see you pray over a need for healing or a miracle? Have your kids ever seen you be in a place of desperation where you called on the name of the Lord and you included them in that miracle? Aren't you glad Elisha included them in the miracle? The widow woman included them. And I don't really know how it happened, but I kind of think she went over to like a small vessel. That's how our faith sometimes is, you know. And maybe she like tentatively tip that jar and that's all she's got left folks I mean she's down to nothing and she starts pouring and it pours and pours and pours and the vessel is filled to the brim and she's kind of nervous like maybe I better not you know stop this but she looks and her one little jar of oil still has oil in it so she goes to another vessel and she she pours and pours and it fills to the brim and she looks and there's still more oil. So she's probably getting a little faith now. And she pours and pours and pours and it fills to the brim and, and she looks in the little, and it's still there. And she goes, now she's really got faith, right? She, she goes and she pours and pours and pours and it fills to the brim and there's still more oil and she fills every vessel in the house with oil all the way to the brim and when she fills the very last jar to the top the Bible said that the oil stopped how much oil would have been poured if she would have had one empty vessel enough to fill one empty vessel I don't know how many were in her house the Bible doesn't say, it just says borrow not a few. And so they filled the house with emptiness so God could show them his fullness. Amen. I believe that this miracle of the oil is God's message to our church at this time in the history of our church. Let me explain what I mean. You see, God has the answer to every question. God has a provision for every need. God has a power for every problem. And when you pray, your great need and God's fullness meet, and we find all that we need in Him. Jesus always has the power and the provision by what He needs is a lot of emptiness. We've been in a season in our church of blessing and power and provision. We've seen financial blessing as we bless the work of God around the world. But I want to be very transparent with you that until the last few weeks, we've been in what I believe is a spiritual dearth of God filling empty vessels with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I know there is no shortage of God's power. But there has been a shortage of empty vessels. And you only see great power when there is something for God to do. And if we bore God half to death, he can't die. If we bore God with little prayers and small faith and only a few empty vessels, then we only see a tiny portion of what God is capable of doing. But the message for Atlanta West is that it is time to fill the house with empty vessels so that God can show himself strong. Strong on our behalf. The difference between a single soul revival and a 100 soul revival, it doesn't have anything to do with God's power. It has to do with how many empty vessels we bring into his presence. 
And when you see reports on Mission Sunday of a thousand being filled with the Holy Ghost, I don't doubt it for a minute because I know they fill stadiums and coliseums with thousands of empty vessels. And every empty vessel that desires to be filled will be filled. I believe that it can happen to 10,000 or 100,000 or a million. There is no restraint with God. All we need is more emptiness to come into contact with his power. On Tuesday, January 28th, was here at family prayer. Our trustee board meeting had been on Monday. We reviewed the reports for 2019. And as you know, in our business meeting that took place on January 29th, I was praying about that report. I knew that that report was not pleasing to the Lord. First time guests, down. People baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, a decrease over the previous year. People baptized in the Holy Ghost, decrease in the previous year how can you have more empty vessels filled when you have fewer empty vessels brought into the presence of the one who fills people with the Holy Ghost John said I baptize you with water but there is one who is coming after me he is mightier than I he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire Jesus is the one who fills people but they have to be in his presence. That could be at home, at a small group, or in a Sunday service. It doesn't matter. Just when an empty vessel comes in contact with the power of the oil that flows. So I'm here that Tuesday night. I'm praying. I'm concerned. I'm upset. I take responsibility and ownership for the health of this church. And I'm seeking the Lord and I just stopped and I text Brother D.J. Hill, our evangelism pastor, and I said, Brother D.J., I said, please pray with me and think about how we can help our people see the vision of what God wants to do. My text message exactly said, praying for revival. Should we find another way to create a target of 100 souls? I didn't realize it then, but Brother DJ was also here on that Tuesday night praying, and we talked for a few minutes. So I said, I want you to think about and pray about how we can visualize what God wants to do in our church. He came back in a couple of days, shared the story that I preached to you today, and I remembered, I love this story, and several years ago, July 9th, 2009, I preached on nothing matters in this church, and I said, Brother DJ, I feel this in my spirit. I want you to know that our entire pastoral team has bought into this vision, and we are believing that God can fill at least 100 people with the gift of the Holy Ghost in the next few months. If you believe it with me, would you stand right now as Brother DJ Hill comes to continue preaching this message, Wanted Empty Vessels. That if you believe it, would you lift your voice now and say, God, I'm going to be a part of seeing this mission happen. God, whatever I have to do, whatever I have to rearrange in my life, I want to see it happen. Amen. You may be seated. Robin. Ellis grew up going to a Pentecostal church with her grandmother, who herself had 14 kids. Robin was 13 years old when she was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, when Robin turned 18, she stopped going to church and started going to college only. She eventually started to go back to church off and on, but never faithfully throughout her 20s. She said her life was miserable, depressed, sad, also, that holidays were extremely tough for her. One day in 2015, she drove to Virginia to visit her sister. And while there, she suffered a stroke. Her sisters and some of her sister's friends visited her at the hospital, and they asked her if they, she would be okay with them praying for her. Before Robin could even say no like she really wanted to, she shocked herself because she just blurted out, Yes, you can. She said it scared me a little bit. They started to pray for her, and that day, in the hospital room, Robin Ellis received the gift of the Holy Ghost for the very first time by evidence of speaking in other tongues. Sister Robin, can you join me up here? Can you come up here? Would you mind? 
Let's give Sister Robin a hand. She eventually came back to Georgia, and she knew that she needed to start to go back to church. One day she was praying, and she looked in the mirror and said, God, I haven't been going to church since I moved to Georgia 11 years ago. She wasn't willing to call listening to TV preachers going to church. She knew that there was something different when we get together in the house of God where two or three are gathered together in his name, that there is something different when you walk into the presence of God with the body of Christ. So she continued to pray, and in October 2017, she went on a 21-day fasting and praying journey, and she was asking God where she needed to go to call her church home. In January 2018, she was talking to her neighbor about looking for a church, a Pentecostal church. Her neighbor told her that she has a friend. Her neighbor wasn't even going here, but her neighbor's friend goes here, and her neighbors told her that my friend attends Atlanta West Pentecostal Church. You should try it out. She attended for the first time two years ago, Easter service, 2018. She came for a few weeks, but then she missed a couple of weeks. She struggled with the idea of attending a big church, but she did decide to come back and give it one more try. And when she did, Brother David Jury saw her, came up to her and said that the church has missed her. We've noticed she's been gone, and how is she doing he, she told her, well, she wants to get connected. She, she, you know, it's a big church, so how can she get connected? And he invited her to attend Welcome to the Family. That August, she joined Welcome to the Family and took the first step to connecting as a member or to committing to ministry here at Atlanta West. She was so concerned she wasn't going to meet people. And I remember yesterday on the phone when I clarified this story with her, she said, I, I didn't think I would meet people at such a big church. And she said, when she joined Welcome to the Family, I started to get to know everybody. Everybody was saying, hey, everybody got to know me. It was so awesome. The church didn't seem that big anymore. It seemed more like a family reunion, huh? After completing Welcome to the Family, she joined Your New Life. She was so excited about telling me the day that she met Pastor Daryl Johns. She thought she was never going to be able to meet or even talk to the pastor at such a big church. One day after the discipleship class, she was switching from her heels to flats because, you know, girls, sometimes comfort is better than fashion, even though you guys go through the pain to look good, but you got to wear the heels. She stumbled as she was on one leg trying to get it on, and she's walking and hobbling, and she bumped into a man, and the man said, excuse me, and she recognized the voice, the voice of her shepherd. <laughs> she turned around, and she got to meet Brother John's. He talked with her and asked her if she was in the discipleship class, and she got to share her story with him. She was so overjoyed that he took the time to listen to her and to encourage her. And at the end of our conversation last night on the phone, after hearing her testimony, her story about how she came to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, she said this, why did I wait to experience this? I've been looking my whole life. What took me so long to find Jesus this way? What took me so long to get the emptiness out and to be filled with his presence? Don't you remember the day, the first time that you were filled when you came into a place like this and your emptiness was then filled? You were no longer longer void. You are no longer broken. Where God came in and changed your whole life. That's it. Let's just give God one more hand. Let's continue to worship him and what he's doing. Story's not over. Story's not over. Please be seated. Well, last week, Sister Robin, she started the 201 Discipleship class. She's now in the 201 Spiritual Disciplines class. She went on to tell me, when God works in your life, he works through you to everyone around you. Robin, at that time, while she was attending church, she was bringing her granddaughter to Chips on Sundays with her. Robin was consistently trying to get Amy's Mom, Casey, to come to church with her. Casey, can you join me up here, please? Let's give Sister Casey a hand. Robin would say things like, I'm, I'm going to church on Sunday. You should go with me. Robin said she wanted to be careful with how she came off 
to Casey because our approach is very important. The widow's sons didn't go around the neighborhood kicking in doors saying, give me all your empty pots. <laughs> they didn't do that. They might have wanted to feel like that some days, but they didn't. 2 Kings 4.3 says, go around and ask all of your neighbors for empty jars, empty vessels, and don't ask for just a few. Our approach matters, and they did everything with love. The Bible doesn't say this, but I'm sure her sons came to houses that were unwilling to allow them to have any empty vessels. Maybe they were hurt by things in the past and they've allowed somebody to borrow something from their house and so this time they were shut off, they were reserved and they said, no, I'm not willing for you to have anything, keep moving on. But they didn't let that stop them. They did not give up on their mission. They went to the next house because they know they needed empty vessels and they needed to get as many as possible. And they weren't gonna allow one house to prevent them from fulfilling their mission. They also weren't looking for a very specific kind a vessel. The qualification and the only qualification was emptiness. Someone say emptiness. It didn't matter if it was red, yellow, black, or white. The height, the education, the economic status of the vessels did not matter. Only thing that those sons were looking for was emptiness. That's the only qualification. It doesn't matter what their past life was, what they've been through, if they've gone to church before. It doesn't matter their background. The only thing that mattered was they needed emptiness because they knew they had a jar of oil that was going to fill a lot of emptiness. And so they just went and found emptiness. And Sister Robin saw emptiness in Casey. She tactfully and lovingly kept urging Casey to come to church with her. Last September, Casey decided that she would come. Robin was so excited, not just because she was going to go to church, but also that she no longer had to take an Uber. She didn't have to pay to get to church and pay to go home from church. That's commitment. They're not gonna, she didn't let something hold her back from coming to the presence of God and gathering together with her church family. So when Casey and Robin and Amy came to church, they went to check in Amy, the granddaughter for Chips, Casey's daughter. Casey said, man, Chips was fired up that day in worship. Robin responded, if you think this is awesome, just wait till you get to the sanctuary. And I'm so thankful for our Chips ministry that pours week in and week out into our children. Incredible things are happening back there. So Casey continued to come with Robin since then. And on February 2nd, Casey received the gift of the Holy Ghost for the very first time. On February 16th, Casey was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of her sins. Casey just went to welcome to the family class for the second time this morning. This is what God can do with emptiness. No matter how broken, no matter how long someone was away from God, he can still fill the emptiness. And no matter if no one's ever been filled, you know what? God can still fill the emptiness. When you go in love, when you go out and try not to just borrow a few, when you give it your all, God will come alongside you and he'll help you. And ultimately, he will fill the emptiness. Investing in relationships work. Interceding in prayer works. Inviting to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and the church works. Amen. You all can be seated. Thank you so much. Can you give them a hand one more time? Brother Jacob, brother Jacob. So how many Casey's are in our lives that are waiting for us? How many Sister Robins? Go to school with you. Go to work with you. In your family, maybe even in your home, that are waiting on you because you and I have the answer to the emptiness. They're waiting on us to share our testimony, to teach a Bible study because those still work. This morning, Brother Zach Davey, who's been teaching a Bible study for a few weeks, to Brandon. Brandon received the gift of the Holy Ghost this morning for the very first time. Bible studies still work. How many Casey's and Robins are waiting on us to bring them to our small group so that they can connect with us on common ground and then we can lead them to holy ground? How many of them are waiting for us to be brought to Jesus so that they can be filled? They are empty and God is crying out, wanted empty vessels. 
He wants to pour his spirit out upon all flesh. And God is calling us to go out and get empty vessels. And this year, I am believing in faith that we will see over 100 filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. The means is our message that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. And we will measure the mission. We will see this come to pass. We will see over 100 filled with the Holy Ghost. This following video was on December 20th, 2017. That's Sister Carol Forte. She's on the fifth road right now. That's two, three years ago when she was filled with the Holy Ghost for the first time. Because we measured the mission, God did incredible things. And right now I join you in the foyer, revealing the 100 soul revival wall. 100 empty vessels that God is going to fill this year with the gift of the Holy Ghost. As you see, we already have one filled from this morning. Brandon Mab received the gift of the Holy Ghost. What we're going to do when someone receives the Holy Ghost, we're going to come out here and we're going to celebrate. Can't you see it now? Your family, your loved one, your friend receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost being filled for the very first time. Their life being changed forever. Come on, don't you believe it, Atlanta West? We're going to see it. We are in a season of revival. We're going to bring as many empty vessels as possible. We're going to do it. Come on, we're going to go everywhere. We're going to do whatever it takes. We're not going to borrow a few. We're going to see this whole wall filled in the name of Jesus Christ by the end of the year. If you believe it, would you clap your hands right now with all of your might? Amen. You may be seated. Sister Carol, would you would just stand up and wave? Look at how far she's come. She's in the 201 Spiritual Disciplines class. She's one of the first ones at the altar worshiping, praising God, and thanking him for how far he has brought her. The future of the widow was dependent on the miracle of the multiplying of the oil. If she did not believe and if she did not obey, her sons would have been sold into slavery. She would have died in poverty. She would have lost her future, but because she acted in faith, her future was preserved. The future of our church is contingent on our faith and obedience to God's word. If we believe that Jesus Christ can fill emptiness and empty souls with his spirit, we will bring them into his presence to be filled, wanted, empty vessels. The future of this church depends on empty vessels being filled. If there are no new people then the church will die with us and people will die in their sins. So the reason we have the wall is because it puts a vision in front of us. Every time we walk into the church, into the foyer, we see it that I am not here to talk to the 99 that are safe in the sheepfold. When I'm here, whether it's on cameras, whether it's altar team, whether it's chip, whether it's ushers, everything is to advance the mission. Every ministry, every worship, every raised hand, it's to create an environment for people to feel safe so that they can come in here with their emptiness and they can leave with his fullness. So we put it there to measure the mission because we want to see it. Oh, there's only two right now. That means I still have work to do. I got to go teach a Bible study to my coworker. Oh, there's still 30 left. You know what? I got work to do. I need to go door knocking. I need to talk to that restaurant owner that I go to all the time. I need to talk to the clerk at the grocery store that I talk to every single week. I need to invite them to church. There are still empty vessels to be filled. And then when we leave the church and we walk through that foyer, that wall is there as a reminder that we are entering our mission field, that all around us are empty souls that are in need of salvation. I can remember in 2017 when we had that first 100-soul revival and we decided to bring empty vessels to be filled. I can remember a few of those people that year whose lives and families were changed forever because we decided that we wanted to lead people to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and develop them into fully devoted followers of him. 
I remember that year, Abriana Austin received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Bob Lee received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Brother Donald, for helping and being a friend and reaching out to him. C.J. Walton received the gift of the Holy Ghost in 2017. There was excitement. Deborah Bonza, I see you somewhere over here. You received the gift of the Holy Ghost in 2017. Thank you for helping sing and minister at our African national dinners. This is what happens when we get excited about souls. Delaney Nixon received the gift of the Holy Ghost in your deck, who is also part of our African national dinner. Brother Brad, I celebrate with your family. That was the year Ezra received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I remember it when you came into the sanctuary and told us. Francisca Lawson Body. Gavin Cole, that was the year you received the Holy Ghost. Olivia Hernandez, we celebrate with you all. That was her year. Robert Page, where are you at, Brother Page? We celebrate with you. Sandra Manata, who also is here. Brother John's and Sister John's neighbor, Susan Roach, received the Holy Ghost that year. And Sister Treasure Sini received the Holy Ghost that year. We celebrate. And how many more people are we going to be able to celebrate next year and in two years? Because they started off empty, but then all of a sudden, someone reached out to them and brought them to the house of God, to the presence of God, to a small group, to a Bible study, and they were filled so who will it be this year? Your neighbor, your coworker, your family member, a friend, wanted empty vessels. You may be seated just for one more moment. It starts with take two. But then it goes to investing in relationships and sharing your testimony, teaching a Bible study, interceding in prayer, inviting them into the presence of God, and then let God do what he does best, fill, pouring out his spirit. And God is already doing it. This past week we celebrate with two in the crowd youth service who were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost at Hope Ministry on Saturday morning. At the nursing home services, Brother Crabtree and Brother Walker, people are receiving the Holy Ghost. Here on Sunday mornings and at IPAW, our Spanish services at 4.15 in the afternoon. And today, yes, we didn't forget it during announcements, but we wanted to save it for this very sweet spot to rise up our faith that God has done it before and he is going to do it again. So will you help me celebrate what? with the party! We celebrate with Alexis Gurley who Friday night at a youth rally received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Velma Aaron at the nursing home received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Braylon Frazier was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ last Sunday. Natalie, thank you for coming to my wife and I's small group. She was baptized last Sunday in the name of Jesus Christ. Delaney Nixon was baptized in Jesus' name. Dwayne Stevenson, right here in the altar, received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amber Robinson was baptized in Jesus' name. Now, Brother Ray, she texted me. I didn't forget. We celebrate Porque La Fiesta. Look to your neighbor. Say Porque La Fiesta. Today we celebrate with Matilde Rolas, who was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and Desmond Roches, who received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can we thank God for what he's been doing? Over 30 baptized in Jesus' name this year. Over 20 filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost this year. Now let's go ahead and celebrate that 100 soul revival wall being filled this year because of the work that we are going to do. Wanted. Empty vessels, wanted, empty vessels. Look to your neighbor and say empty vessels. God has given us a call today. Bring empty vessels. And we will celebrate every time someone is filled. But for now, it's time to commit to the mission. On the altar spread out are these empty vessel keychains. Thank you some of the hyphen who helped 
so long for doing this to help get this home. We're going to take it home. We're going to put it on our keys, on our mirror, on the refrigerator, on the mirror at home, wherever you look at a lot. Put it there as a reminder that my mission is to bring empty vessels to be filled. Now, these aren't the, the son's empty vessels. You don't need to borrow. You just borrow a few, okay? There's a limited amount. Don't just grab 100, all right? Go do that with souls, but not with the keychains. You're going to take it, and we're going to commit to what God is going to do this year. But to the people that are tired of the emptiness, to the people that are broken, and you barely made it here today, maybe you drove by and you just felt like you needed to drive in, or somebody has been inviting you for months, and you're struggling. You're like Robin. You're sad, depressed. Anxiety has gripped your heart. If you're tired of the emptiness, I know what God, no matter how empty you are, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter your sin, no matter your story, the oil is here today to fill you, to take the hurt and the pain, the guilt and the shame, to replace it with the peace that passes understanding, to replace it with joy that's everlasting to replace it with a hope and a mighty Savior that loves you, that will never leave you, that will never forsake you. He's not stingy with his oil. He's not a respecter of persons. He did it for me, and he can do it for you. So in a moment when I ask this to come to the front, if you're willing to commit to leading people to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, I want you to take one of these, and I want you to pray and commit to the mission and if you are tired of the emptiness and you want to be filled, then I'm going to want you to come. If you would, close your eyes all across this place with me. If you're tired of the emptiness and that's you today and you're broken and you're struggling, would you just raise your hand if today you want to be filled with this power? You need your life changed forever. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, if everyone would, Open your eyes and look at me for a moment. All across this room are people that are empty. So the 99 are safe in the sheepfold. We have a mission. It's to find somebody and help them to get under the source. Because the oil can be pouring all day, but if they're not under the source, they're never going to be filled. So when we come to this altar, when we step into this sanctuary, when we go to our job, wherever we go, let's commit to leading people to the ultimate filler, the one who pours out his spirit willingly if you would come with the person next to you and let's all make our way to this altar would you come as close as possible to leave room for other people that's it come as close as you can that's awesome that's awesome if you're tired of the emptiness and you feel comfortable, we have altar counselors all across this place that are willing to pray with you, willing to help you. If you would, just raise your hand again or look to someone and say, hey, I need prayer. I need my life changed. Thank you so much. God is going to feel you today. Would you raise your hands right now? Would you lift your voice? God is about to do a special work. Someone can be filled right now with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You are not alone. You are not too far gone. You are not broken. You can be filled today. You can have your life changed. You can get rid of the pain and the brokenness. Come to the altar with your brokenness and God will lead you with his fullness. That's it now, saints. Would you lift your voice right now and let's pray.